Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you, are you this evening? I'm doing fine. This is our last Thursday recording for a little while, as we will head into Tuesday recording starting next week. And the podcast will release on Wednesday. Um, I have not started The Boys. Have you? I have not started the boys yet. I know we're, I know part of the reason we're switching is uh, the boys premiered tonight, or I guess earlier today. Uh, I've already started seeing spoilers out there, and I'm like, damn it, I gotta put the mute Those button. people so yes. should be sent to a bad place. <laughs> yes, yes. And, it, and it's the trades too. I'm just like, ah. So, you know, it's everywhere. But, uh, but yeah, I know we're going to be talking to the acolyte. Uh, tonight and then yeah i'm looking forward to watching the boys this weekend and of course house of the dragon starts on sunday which you know i gotta i have to say uh the the lead up for 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 both shows uh, with all their marketing that they've been doing this week like the whole banners of furling across literally across the planet yeah. <laughs> with yeah. team green and team team black uh it's just, it's been brilliant yeah so so i just am surprised the green banners remain up for an extended period of time or if people are like no 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 we're team black like the whole which team are you on i still don't think there's a choice like like (laughs) if you watch the first season i really don't think you can make a ploy for team green okay yeah unless unless you like rooting for the villains which there are people and 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 if that's the case i respect that as long as you know team green is the villain they are they are. They are. Yeah. I mean, despite yeah. despite the incest happening over on Team Black. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the Targaryens are a little problematic. We 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 you know we stipulate to that, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I knew I was listening to the official podcast this week, and uh, they had the showrunner Ryan Cook on, on there, and he was you know, really they did the host were asking him, so which team are you? And he's like, I'm Team Story. I mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, and also we got the news that uh, HBO Max has uh, renewed the show already for uh, for a third season, and George H R R Martin mentioned that uh, he's they're working on you know, stories for both the third and fourth seasons, and, and there's no reason I think that the show probably won't get renewed for a fourth season. We um, will be watching that, and we'll probably get that like five years later. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But- yeah, it's like that and the boys. I mean, yeah, both shows have taken two years to get to this point. I just, I, the boys, so, so I keep having to remind myself this is going to be the fourth season. Why? But it feels like so much, so much more has happened because, but then again, I feel like what did the boys, when did the boys first air? Was it 2019 or was it 2020? It was 2019. It was before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think I think that's what's messing with my head because I'm like, why does it? It feels like an older show, but yeah, it's only in its fourth season, mm-hmm. um, and and now it's been confirmed that they will officially be ending it with a season five. Eric Kripke has shared that in the past, which it felt like as soon as I read that, I was thinking to myself, well, that makes sense. He wanted Supernatural to end with season five, so this this guy really likes. A five season show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. It's funny. I was reading his uh, comments. So yeah, he dropped all the social media uh, where it's like final season motherfuckers. <laughs> and, uh, but part of it goes back to his. Uh, to, I guess he was saying that because he's a, he's a TV writer, and uh, it was one of those things where they always TV shows have a five act arc. Yeah. As far as individual episodes. Yep. So that's where the the his whole fascination with the number five came from yeah and and it makes sense and i even had respect for that back when i watched because i watched the first five seasons of supernatural and then beyond there and then as some some of us we drop and then we check in and then we drop again (laughs) because the show (laughs) kept going for 10 more seasons um so so it's just but but I had a hard time after season five with that show because it really did feel as though the writers were grasping for like the next 
like they found their way. There were definitely some good later seasons and some yeah. bad ones. But you could tell there wasn't a clear defined arc. And I think with the boys, you can you there there is somewhat of a trust. Like for all of the, the ridiculousness, the chaos, the gore, the blood, the sex, all of that that goes on with the boys, there's something about the way they have done the character arcs as well as the story arcs season after season that still makes you trust like they are going somewhere and when like when it concludes it'll be it'll hit you and it'll be like make it all worth it in the end there will be a payoff totally totally and i, I think he also touched on that too and that and we've talked about this with with the show there's only so many the, you know at the core is we, we, it's homelander and butcher and there's only so many ways you can like continue to escalate their their conflict at some point it, they have to finally have their final big showdown oh and he was, like, homelander has to like die yeah. at the end of the day like you but then you can't have the show without him right right so, so yeah yeah we yeah. we'll see and and i will say this and this will be maybe a first for me that if anybody who's listening has not watched Gen V and are watching the trailers for the boys season four and are confused about a virus, go freaking watch Gen V, go and binge it because yeah. it'll make, I, this is one of the few times where I really think people who haven't watched something might just be a little bit thrown off. And also it's a really good show. <laughs> It is, yeah, and and even though even though the boys will end with season five, he he did say that Gen V will continue, and and, and also I think they're working on a another spinoff as well. I think based in Mexico, so those shows will continue even though the the uh, the, the boys, which is funny given how they poke fun of like universe and Empire building is now doing the very same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think those other shows will also have a five hour five season structure. Yeah. Probably yeah, probably, and yeah. granted, maybe Gen V will need a sixth season, considering the sh- season two will be a little bit different mm-hmm. than than season one, um, unfortunately. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, stay tuned for both of those shows, um, as well as join us next week as we start to unfold and discuss the next chapters with them. Um, Will got some really exciting news this week. He was boasting about it all over social media. So I'm just going to let him spill the, his Star Trek news. Yeah, and it's probably exciting news for you as well. Maybe you'll give Star Trek a, a go again, where Paul Giamatti has been cast in the upcoming Star Trek Starfleet Academy show in a recurring guest role. And this guest role will be the the, the, the big bad for the first season of this show upcoming star trek series i'm just gonna see chuck from billions the whole time (laughs) i'm gonna be like chuck what you doing in space what's going on here what what's (laughs) happening chuck yeah i mean he he's a good actor to play a villain yeah he 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 has that but it's interesting paul giamatti is one of the few people who could play a villain but -hmm. also play a good guy yeah yeah i mean you got an emmy for uh, john adams so yeah, yeah. 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 But um yeah, so that was that was really I mean, with this show, I mean, they are between Giamatti and apparently he's a, a big Star Trek fan and the uh, and the showrunner Alec and producer Alex Kurtzman was was noting that in their in the promotional materials mm-hmm. uh, about the show is that uh you know Giamatti was they were really excited that whenever they, they they approached him about it, he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm a big fan. Let's do this." So, uh, so yeah, we got that, and then also we just got some more confirmation that the series is going to be set in the 32nd century, which is the same time period as the uh, show Star Trek Discovery was set in. So it's another spinoff of that show that really kicked off the whole new Trek uh, franchise on Paramount Plus. So yeah. that show just ended its. Uh, just ended this uh, run uh, this this month, but um, I still haven't finished it yet. It's just well, of the of the new Trek shows. It's the it's the one that uh, I I started out really really excited about it, but over really the last two seasons, 
uh, just kind of fell off with some of their story choices. But um, but yeah, it, this show will be set in that. And of course, Holly Hunter was uh, first announced uh, to be the lead in the show, and um, and then Giamatti's character apparently has a connection with one of one of the cadets that is going to be in the in the academy. So sounds yeah. like speaking of yeah, so it sounds like this show is going to have sort of a Gen V vibe as well. So uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see how they do that in the Star Trek universe. Right, right, yeah. I think you could get me to watch Star Trek if you told me Olivia Coleman's going to randomly appear in an episode. Well, it happened on the on the bear. <laughs> I know that's why I brought it up because I. And and we were we were talking and we're gonna talk about the bear season two because Will finally finished it and I've rewatched it recently, but it was so funny I couldn't tell you that that was gonna happen because it was and I was so tempted to because it was this I watched it the same time that we were talking about um, the uh, secret invasion. Oh okay. At which she was a part of and we kept talking. Those any time we would bring her up, I would be like, oh, she's all over the place. She randomly yeah. even appeared in the bear. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, that was one of the best kept secrets of that yeah. show. Like, yeah. how how did that not leak or people didn't go wire? But I think it was because it was such an a, like an iconic moment that mm-hmm. you knew you're like, this isn't meant to be spoiled. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, and we got a couple other news items before we, we get to our discussion about the bear. So let's uh, let's, let's zip, zip through through those, and we can we can get to that. Right, right. Yeah. So Tim Meadows joins Pe- Peacemaker season two as Argus agent Linkston Flurry. The show's second season will reportedly take place after the events of the upcoming Superman movie. Go figure. James Gunn yeah. is behind both. Yeah, yeah. So basically, even though he did, James Gunn did say that season one of Peacemaker happened in the old DCEU, apparently they're going to do some story magic and season two of, will be a part of the new DCU. So, yeah. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. Well, there's been so much time that has passed I, I, and so many different versions of the DC. I really don't think there needs to be a lot of movie yeah, yeah. magic to pull yeah. that off. Exactly. <laughs> I think we're all like, we don't care. <laughs> Just give us yeah. our characters and our story. Exactly. Yeah. For sure, um, for sure. And then meanwhile, on the MCU side, Blade has lost another director and this movie is just, <laughs> you know, it's- it's not looking good. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Yeah, so got heard a little bit more about what was going on there. So the uh, the um, director we got the word yesterday that the director did leave uh, Jan Dimaj, uh, who was the second person. And of course, there's also been a bunch of uh, screenwriters and scriptwriters coming in with this project. It's just basically cursed. Like it's it's becoming like the Flash of the D- of the MCU, <laughs> where it's just taken. Ooh many years to like get to screen uh, uh but i yeah. i would i would go with uh black adam more than the flash but okay oh yeah fair, <laughs> uh, that's another uh, uh, again an, a very fair comparison i mean this this blade was announced in 20 to 2019 comic-con yeah so yeah so uh but yeah i was listening to uh jeff schneider and and, and roca on the hot mic this evening and of course they were talking about this and and and, and jeff shared that part of the reason why he was uh, move, moved from this project was a, he was just hard a hard person to get to to work with and just, just a lot of just behind the drop behind the scenes drama which you know when I saw this I figured that was probably the case uh, even though they're trying to put the spin on it that they're just they're not going to rush this they want to get it right instead of getting it out fast but anyway. No, I think both of those things can be true simultaneously. That is true. Like, like yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, but at this rate, it'll be like we'll be in like phase ten of the MCU. <laughs> Wait, which is fine, but we're not going to see Mahershala play yeah. the role. Like he can't. Like yeah. that's the ticking time bomb of exactly. at what point do you recast your lead? Yeah. Um, and also, why does Blade need its own movie? The 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 Blade that we got with Wesley Snipes is actually a pretty good movie. So you could do the Hulk's hulk version and just sneak blade into some other movies and then 
see what happens with the audience and then find your creator and then tell an origin or whatever kind of solo movie you want with him. But I, I feel like, like there, there's already a series of movies that pop culture is aware of Mm -hmm. that do a pretty decent job, but I don't know. It's just, it's just looking like what you said, a cursed movie for sure. So MCU was bound to have one of those. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I doubt, it's supposed to come out in November of 2025, but between all this stuff going on and, of course, the things that we talked about a few weeks ago with Bob Iger saying that they're going to be reducing output anyway, this movie's going to get definitely get pushed back. Yeah, yeah. I, I have more faith that we'll see the X-Men before we see Blade at this point. Yeah. Yeah, which is weird, but... Yeah. Um, and then you saw a movie this week that you want to talk about. Yeah, just real fast. So uh, Godzilla minus one. I finally it was it dropped on Netflix. Uh, I want to say last week or week before last, and uh, been meaning to watch it. I, I was hoping to watch it last year when it was dropped, and um, I I just have to say, so it did win an Oscar for for best visual effects, and of course a lot of people made uh, talked about how with the shoestring budget compared to some Hollywood productions, because this was a, a film made in Japan, uh, you know, it shows what you can do whenever, uh, you know, even you don't necessarily need big ass budgets to be able to, to create a, a visually stunning film. And it is, but beyond all of that, the story, Oh my God. So I, you know, if I had seen this movie, in 2023 when it was released it would have been on my top five list it definitely i was i went back and looked at my list as far as like which films i would knock out and i would knock off barbie to to put this one in and i would probably put it in my top three as far yeah, as that makes films sense. yeah as far as movies that i that um would, would have been my best as far as like 2023 because the human, the, the the character story and the, the the arc that the protagonist goes through in this in this film, and and the ending. I mean, it was just so satisfying. It was. I mean, there were moments where I, you know, of course, I, as I get older, I get to be more of a softy anyway. But I was tearing up and just so many things about it. But all the things that people said about it, I completely agree i uh, see why it's like 98 percent on rotten tomatoes for audience and critics because it it is legit that good that's great and that is on netflix yeah. um for anybody who would also want to shed some tears and <laughs> yeah happy happy tears sad tears just just a, yeah it's just a really really good film i just can't recommend it enough yeah We've both had had changes occur to our list yeah. from last year. <laughs> now, <Yeah. laughs> <Totally. laughs> just like ah, I, I guess I was wrong about that because now I finally got around to watching this movie, and yep. you know, I, I have it on my list. I haven't watched it yet, but um, and I know I didn't do a movie ranking last year, but I'm going to in the near near future finally sit down and watch um, Iron Claw. Um, oh yeah, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's I was just one. talking. Yeah. yeah, that one is definitely on there as, as um, something that probably should have got an award recognition, even though I know it missed the deadlines. But mm-hmm. people always talk about and say good things about that movie. So, yeah. Um. All right. Well, that brings us to Olivia Coleman in the Bear season two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, chef. <laughs> She's only in it for like 10 minutes, but yeah. still, I mean, so, okay, because I, I did, um, like, over the last weekend, just plow through the last half of the mm-hmm. bear season two, um, and so, I guess my, my question is to, like, lead us into this, yeah. is, I'm going to first talk about what I dubbed the Seven Fishes episode, which mm. is flashback christmas episode mm-hmm. like first of all i forgot that 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 episode is an hour long yeah um what, but, what an hour uh, right so yeah. and now there's a lot of people who say that's the best episode of the season now would you agree with that or what were, what was your experience with that episode 
I no, it, it actually it was not my best. Mm-hmm. It wasn't my favorite. Forks, the episode seven Richie story was my favorite one of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm uh, right there with you. I'm I'm yeah. right there. Like there's something about Forks that <laughs> gets yeah. me. Yeah, uh, fishes. I, uh, I I I had to stop it a few times. <laughs> it was just so intense and and. It was, I mean, not to say it was a bad episode. It was just, I, you just have to be emotionally ready to, to watch that particular episode. I wasn't in a place when I watched it on Saturday. I, even, I think I even messaged you over the weekend uh, when I when I was watching it. I was like, whoo, this is intense. And it's, it's a, it, it hit close to home in some respects as far as some of the, um, the holiday dynamics, as far as yeah. the things I remember growing up as a kid, and even you know, just the noise. Yeah, yeah. The the noise, the chatter, the noise, the, the close up shots. I mean, yep. the face. Yeah. And and it's just so I I was similar with you where I was watching and I'm like I'm like I guess I wasn't in the right headspace, but I for some reason, and I've rewatched this season several times now. Mm-hmm. But this weekend, when I when I turned it on, I um I had different appreciation for that entire episode. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, and the more I think about it, it amazes me how the chatter, the stress, the intensity that they are able to capture in the kitchen, yeah, um, in the restaurant, yeah. they were able to take that. And put it in this holiday family flashback episode. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it just was like totally unexpected. It felt like a play. It felt like, oh my God, so many things. But you also needed that episode because of, I don't, looking back on it now, I don't think I would have the same appreciation for Forks Mm -hmm. having not watched that episode. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it it they really complement each other very well. I mean, yeah, you know, you you can't have forks without having fishes. Right, right. Because you see Richie's relationship with Sid, mm-hmm. and when she's pregnant, and mm-hmm. their love, and so then when I watched Forks and he's on the phone call and she tells him like, well. I I was proposed to like you're you're it's it's so close like Mm -hmm. you're just thinking to yourself man and I noticed I didn't notice this before while he's on the phone he's still wearing his wedding ring yeah I noticed that yeah he's never taken it off yeah I noticed that too I was like wait a minute I thought they were I thought he was separated from her Yeah. yeah 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 but but that's just something else they can pull that for future reference of when that happened, a future flashback. Um, but okay, so I I wasn't sure. So for me, yeah, like like it was Forks, and then it was the the uh, the Dutch episode. Yeah. Or the, yeah, that episode was up there, and then the finale is just, you know, <laughs> it's, just, it's just I okay. I'm. I want to get your thoughts on this, but I also. <laughs> um, I just want to say again, another like something that struck me last night when I was watching the finale yeah. is I didn't realize that Carmi got stuck in the um in the fridge so early. Mm-hmm. It's 11 minutes. I had to a clock track because I knew it was coming, but for yeah. some reason my memory told me, oh, towards the end. But no, 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 it's really quick. Like yeah. he gets stuck in there for an extended period of time. And it's just so interesting because for some reason I felt like like they were making their way through and the next thing you know, Carmi gets stuck in and then they're mm-hmm. able to wrap up service. But no, it like they they are making their like all of that happens, but there's a much longer period after service ends mm-hmm. um that plays out. Yeah. Yeah, that so the, the finale was the next 
episode as far as like as far as the back back half of the season mm-hmm. that was the next one that i really really enjoyed just you know seeing seeing said like you know whatever she you know richie taking over that role yeah. as far as like running the kitchen and and the orders and stuff and just seeing the met- and then seeing her like she's all on her nerves but then just really having to like pull everybody together and, and all the lessons that she had been like carrying around the coach k book and i remember i think even in what was either episode eight or eight or nine i think they even had the voiceover of coach k talking about teamwork and all that kind of stuff yeah. and so she was you know adapting those things that she had learned and and, and pulled that pull that kitchen together so but yeah you're right about about the with, with carney and you know and for me that was the first time watching it but i didn't realize it, it did seem like a lot more had happened and i don't know if it's because i just like was benching this stuff or or what but it did it, but once i realized like oh it was really early in the episode when he when i when i did look at the time i was like oh we can still have like 40 minutes left or whatever it was and uh and just sort of seeing how it all unfolded and and and, and you know and tina just you know, first you know, Tina's just talking to him and trying to keep, you know, reassuring him. And then, you know, Carmi then just having that moment there where he still thinks she's outside on the other side of the fridge. Yep. And, you know, and it's Claire. And it'll, I, I mean, I just like, I was like, fuck. <laughs> I right. was like, it was just so devastating, you know, because he, you know, they, especially like again, going back to fishes and thinking about how his, you know, how, Mikey and and Richie and all the guys were like talking about how about Claire and and trying to set him up with her and then you know the whole phone number thing and and, and he really the whole him finally opening it up to like allow this relationship to happen and then he goes and set, says what he has to say because of the anxiety and everything that was going on there while he wasn't in, in the locked in the freezer and her hearing that it was just it was just heartbreaking right right and and nobody is able to actually it's interesting how in the finale we see like starting with forks you see richie actually succeed in finding purpose yeah. and is able to step up and mm-hmm. is able to help others step up as well yeah. And and you also see with Sid how how because Richie's there and steps up, she's able to find balance too when everything's going to shit and have that trust in him yeah. to be able to expedite. And then she can focus on what she's good at. And it's like, no, we're not going to let this fall apart. It's also heartbreaking. Nobody can do that for Carmi. Yeah. And so that's why Carmi still trapped in the fridge. Mm-hmm. Like, and and then, oh man, then you gotta go into the whole the actual family dynamic that oh. is occurring <laughs> with the mom. Yes, yes. So so what what is your take on the mom? Like we get a lot of mom this this season. Yeah, yeah. So first, yeah. First of all, I didn't realize that was Jamie Lee Curtis when I was watching yeah. Fishes. <laughs> I was like, it, trust me, it took me a while too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, uh, uh, yeah. And it reminded me again, like, also, when she's in her next part of her, this part of her career, her, her chameleon. She, it was the same kind of thing with um, with um, the movie um, everything everywhere all at once it was the same kind of thing i was like oh that's jamie <laughs> curtis yeah but i digress but um it, with with fishes it, it, seeing the anxiety and stuff so i was like okay is she an alcoholic is she mil- you know is it mil- Ill- it, you know anxiety i mean it seemed like that's there was a lot yeah yeah so you know and of course whenever you know when she drives the car through the in, through the uh into the living room there yeah. uh it was definitely like okay there was definitely some mental illness issues and it seems also mikey had some things as yeah. well and 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 even carney uh, as far as carney and his anxiety and and so you know there's a lot of this generational trauma uh, trauma 
that this family has dealt with because of some undiagnosed mental illnesses, which it does, it seems though later, um, Sugar, you know, when they didn't bring up the fact about the nurse and stuff, I mean, it, you know, and the phone call from the nurse, uh, you know, I guess she finally was able to get some care and treatment, but, um, but yeah, the whole drama there when, with the opening and Sugar inviting her to the opening, and then she's like, because of all the things that have happened, you know, she's, she's standing there and then Sugar's husband, like, sees her yeah. you know, when he steps out. And then promised, you know, and, and poor guy, I just felt like he was just put in a bad spot because she's like, promise me you're not going to tell the rest of them I was here. And then he's sitting there talking to Sugar at dinner and just the breaking down because he's just feeling so guilty and so shitty because, you know, they have, it seems like they have a really so good relationship where they're very honest with one another. And now he's having to lie to her. So it was just, a, again, just, just excellent. Like you said, you said earlier that, the, that, the, Fish just reminded you of a play. I mean, this whole season, in a lot of ways, is very like, like something you would see at, 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 in a play, and, and, yeah. and, and really just strong storytelling. I mean, this is just like, wow! I, I, I uh, can't wait for for the third season to see how some of these these things unfold. Yeah, it's um, like I just want to take a moment to share my thoughts about that scene between Sugar and Pete because yeah. I like I'm glad I rewatched it again. Mm -hmm. Um and and you would think well I rewatched it a few times before now too but because I've had so much space since my last rewatch of it yeah. um I was seeing different things and, and that scene between him and sugar also hit very differently too, because I think sometimes when you're watching a show and especially during a binge, mm -hmm. like this, this show is still very bingeable. And I think it's written in a way like that makes you want to binge it because some of the ties you're not going to pick up on, but at the same time, it's very emotional roller coaster. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do with caution. Um, but so, so often Pete and the sugar stuff are like cast aside, but whatever the other night when I was watching it and he was breaking down and I just, it, it's so much more than just like a bad situation because he's been around and in this family for so long mm -hmm. and he's the outsider because he's the husband. He's not, he's like Richie, but not yeah. Richie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but and so he also knows like his wife's dynamic with the mom. So mm -hmm. it's like, I, like, I, I also agree. Like it would do her more harm to know than yeah. to not know. So it's like, yeah. Oh, and then there's also fear because whatever mm -hmm. is going on with the mom, is it hereditary? Like yeah. and they're about to have a child and all of this stuff. And, and like, he finally, I think she sees sugar in a good place. Mm -hmm. Like, even though she's busy and stressed, it's like, no, this is successful. This is good. There's happiness yeah. and everything. And that would just bring heartache. So it's yeah. just, it's so well done, but like, it still amazes me how much we both watched season one. We were both mm -hmm. like, it's good, but it's also not like lingering or anything. Yeah. But I do have to ask, did this at all, like, when you finished it, were you like, let me go back and rewatch some of season one? <laughs> it, yes, yes, I, yeah. I did, because it's been so long, and I was like, I need to, I need to do a quick binge before season three starts. <laughs> yeah, and I swear, when I yeah. did that, I was just like, I want to stay in this world, and, yeah. and it, I, got, I got more appreciation for season one now than I ever did before. Yeah. Because I rewatched that season recently, and there's just the you don't you don't understand because this season they took they each episode was felt like it was focused on one character while at the same time telling a full arc of the restaurant. There was yeah. a good timer. There's gonna they. I didn't realize it. I realize it now. There's a timer now set for the third season because. They only got so many months before uncle comes in and, and says, you haven't paid me back yet. So, yep. Yep. so yeah, whole, it, yeah. yeah, it's a very, very well executed season as well as 
leaving threads to be pulled later. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because you know, at, at its core, it's still Carney's story. But, oh yeah. But it's but you're right. I mean, the, they 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 succeed in the second season, just continuing the story, but add all these other, like you said, everybody has growth and and like from Richie to, to Tina become you know taking lessons to to Marcus. You know, we talked about him last week as far as uh, you know work, working at the Dutch restaurant uh learning from you know from the same guy that you know that will poulter uh, yeah will poulter yeah and you, and you see the photo um of, of will poulter and carney together so you, you pull those threads together so i mean it's just well, so many things there's, about it. there's a story will poulter says and you know yeah. as soon as you see that photo it's yeah. confirmation as well as like even more like who are we going to get a flashback there because i did yeah. hear it's going to randomly appear in the third season so who knows yeah. Yeah. but yeah. yeah, I just, and oh, wasn't Sarah Paulson also, yep. she showed up too during Fishes. She did. Sarah Paulson, and I think I wanted to bring her up when we randomly saw her earlier this year in <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah, because yep. it's another actress. Like, the number of cameos in this yeah. show. <laughs> oh gosh, Bob Odenkirk, I mean, I was just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it, you're just. And and yeah, it's just it's so good. Um, I'm looking forward to the third season. Um, sure, for sure. And I'm glad you finally watched it. Um, I am too. I am too. Yeah, and and we will we will we will come back maybe in August or maybe sooner with some reviews of the third season. Um, yes, yes, so. chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Um, <laughs> all right, cousin. So, <laughs> Richie. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. The Acolyte Season 1, Episode 3, Destiny. This is our flashback episode to Brendock 16 years earlier on, on a mysterious pro- planet. The tragic story of two girls begins. Will, why don't you walk us through this episode? Because I tried last week and I don't feel like I did a good job. And um, so why don't you take us through this episode and I will chime in with my thoughts. All right. Well, let me, uh, I'll start with my overall thoughts. Well, let me, uh, let me hear your overall thoughts first, as far as this episode was, did it work better for you this week than than last or, or about the same. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think um, I, 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 this this one worked better for me this week. I have to say, and I think I did feel like it. Honestly, they should have led with this sh- this uh, this episode out the gate because I think what made this episode work better for me was that it it gave actually cared about what was going on as far as the story here whereas before i was sort of like okay it's fine it has you know it has potential but you know it was just fine uh this week was where i really felt like okay i i'm, I'm starting to get a little bit more invested in 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 this story that they're telling even though it still has a lot of the familiar beats from star wars right right yeah. right yeah, yeah but, I mean that, that's that's fair. Um, I don't know if I 100% agree they should have led with this episode because I don't know how you would have done um, the first two episodes um, to yeah. follow because there was quote unquote mystery there and trying to figure out what was going on with the twins mm-hmm. and everything. But it's it's hard. It's good to hear that someone watched this and got more intrigue in the in the in the story because that's what you want a flashback to do which which is harder than people realize because flashbacks yeah. episodes you do know what the outcome is going to be <laughs> right. you, yeah exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> you know because you've already seen the present so you you kind of know you don't know the context and so i think this helped with the context it also raised a few other questions so i'm thinking in my mind oh they did not cast carry on maths for one episode we finally got her for second i think we're gonna get her for a third yeah. um so but but yeah. yeah 
I yeah. I think that's where I also struggled saying confidently, like it got me more curious just because like in my mind, I'm just like, okay, we, yeah. we didn't talk about what happened. So we're getting a little bit more context, did not realize we were dealing with witches, but that's cool. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. I just, I, I, one thing that bothered me is I did not like the, the, the girls that got cast to play the young twins. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, I, would, I, yeah. I did not, especially the one who played May, <laughs> which is mm. bothering me the whole time because she was overacting. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I mean, there were some definitely places where they, they could have had them dial it back a bit with the bickering. I mean, I, I get where they were coming from and what they were trying to are with trying to show there as far as like, you know, we, ha- we have Osha who is like Luke looking to the stars and wanting to not just, you know, not cool about doing this ascension thing. And then May is over here, the, the you know, all in and, 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 and more to at least at this juncture, more tuned to the thread, which I did like, I will say that was one of the things that, Maybe why I did like this episode better was the um, how they really dove into some of the the religious aspects of the and of the force and, and the galaxy and 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 you know how different people call the same mysterious thing out there different things you know whether it's the Jedi call it the force the which is called a thread, but at the, at its core, I mean, when I was watching that scene when the the mother was talking about it, it, it I was like, you know, that should almost work, almost kind of word for word what Obi Wan told Luke whenever they were sitting in the hut on Tatooine in, in A New Hope. So, so mm-hmm. you know, so there there was that aspect of it that I that I did like, um, with, with yeah, I just, exploring that, starting to explore that a little bit more. Right, right. I just think that with May, I'm going to go back to the yeah. May. Um, something yeah. else. It wasn't just the bickering, but it, there, there was a somewhat of an inconsistency with mm-hmm. that they started with her character, where it's like, we are one. Like she kept, like she kept wanting, like she would always follow Osha. Mm-hmm. And find where she was hiding because, like, she wants her twin always connected with her. They are two. That whole chant saying that they are, and yet whenever she's around, it's constantly like, "Pay attention! Don't do yeah. this, this, and that." Like, I'm like, so that, and then the next thing you know, Osha decides she wants to become a Jedi, and May's like, "You must die." Yeah, and it's like, okay, so how did? It, like, there's one thing, like, so now you want to stay with your sister in death. Like, I don't, I don't understand. But then again, you're like, what, 10 years old. So 10 year old logic, but still that escalated quickly. <laughs> I was thinking that too. Yeah, I was like, was oh, like no. took a dark turn all of a sudden. I shall kill you. It's like, yeah. yep, this is why they call this dark magic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right exactly. <there. laughs> Hey. Yeah, and I think it's a good segue to like going back to their their conception, uh, because that again ties into some of the things that we see later down the road with, for example, with uh, dark dark with the uh, Palpatine talking to Anakin. Uh, as soon as that scene started happening, I will start. I you know immediately went to that scene in Revenge of the Sith where they're sitting in the in the um, auditorium there, and Palpatine t- you know, telling Anakin about the dark forces, and you won't learn that from a Jedi. But, you know, but so, so we do, you know, I guess they, I don't know if it's necessarily like Sith at this point, it really they would call it that or not, but I mean, but it's definitely like dark, probably that dark magic that Palpatine was alluding to that, uh, that the mother and, and Corey, uh, mother Anicia, I think is how I pronounce her name. And, uh, Corey were, were clearly engaged in to, uh, to conceive these the, the twins uh, because you know she was you know I guess Anicia had used the magic and then I guess she you know Corey carried them to term so so I did you know so I think they one they you know held canon with the whole chosen one thing but also uh, I think it also picks up on the point of 
what Palpatine was was sharing with Anakin and uh, why maybe May does have that sort of dark streak in her that why now the whoever the master is in this in the show, which I think we're supposed to get the reveal of that next week, um, why he has such an interest in that character. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a there's a lot of I have heard a lot of people bring up some of the older movies and comparison. So they are, are doing a good job about breadcrumbing yeah. or hinting at um, at those films that are later in the timeline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, which <laughs> something that I just struck me while watching, I don't know, the first two scenes while we're inter- getting introduced to Brendock, because like in my mind, I'm like, okay, this is a hundred years before mm-hmm. these movies. How how fast does technology advance in this universe? <laughs> because I feel like we're stuck with the same, no matter what point of the timeline, it's the same technology, no matter where we are. It's just, yeah. I don't know, it's just something very interesting. Like, yeah, it is the Star Trek problem where it's like, everything is, looks as new as <laughs> sometimes more yeah, advanced than what we see later in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like no yeah. time has passed. <laughs> yeah, but I won't, but yeah. But that, well, I will say, though, to that point, though, that, like, when we're in the Imperial period with Andor and other stuff, I mean, I think maybe that shows, like, the inefficiencies or the, you know, the the, the bare bones of the of the Empire where, you know, aesthetics and, and, and nice cities and that kind of stuff is just, just not, they don't care. It's just, like, it's just function over, over, over aesthetic. <laughs> well... It's it's something I noticed. So yeah. oh, that's no, that's a very good point. I mean, that, that that's. But uh, but yeah, the the whole conception of it all. I mean, I had that question right in, right away. Where's the father? But then we we learn Mother Carell carried the children while Mother Anissa created them. And I'll I will say, the highlight of this episode, um, Jody Turner Smith. Yes. Um, was just stellar. Yes. Um. This- I mean, she even surpassed Amandala from the first two episodes in terms of how she was able to portray this character, given the material. Yes. It just it was like I was like, girl, you need to be, you need to be alive in this show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I and I think that's probably where I'm getting my. Bob of like this episode worked better because the actor carried this show. I mean, she had the, the whole back of, of the Star Wars universe on her, and 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 she killed it. I mean, I think yeah. that's what elevates the performance. Definitely elevates elevates this the watchability of this, and and it was such a performance, like you noted, that I was probably a little bit more charitable uh, over more charitable and overlook some of the maybe flaws in, in the writing that uh, I maybe, don't, like, I don't, I'm not saying that there was as many flaws as there was last week in the writing there was some yeah. convenient plot points yeah. but I I also just think like I said before my whole point was mainly of that flashback episodes you know what's going to happen because you've been told previously right. yeah. and you kind of see where people end up so all you're looking for is context clues as well as hints as to things that have yet to be seen like we know that not only did may survive but also someone else did and there's hints and and i go back and forth okay so i'm just gonna say my i'm thinking right now it's corill his mother Mm. and i know i think that there is a red herring or a um Something that the writers purposely put in there to make you not to make you think it's Mother and Anissa, mm-hmm. but I don't think it is. No, I agree. I think it's I agree. Yeah. Um. And yeah. but line I'm hinting at is just that th- because when the Jedi first come to disrupt the ceremony, the ascension ceremony, she people start to get out weapons. It's like no violence, which we know whoever trained May has specifically said you will not kill one of these Jedi like with fork, like with weapons, like mm-hmm. it'll, it'll be, you'll kill the dream and all of that. But I think that Kirill survives and then use, takes that message um, because that's her lover. 
Yeah. <laughs> There's some serious vibes there. So so to uphold and to finish raising their their daughter. Um, but but you go ahead and your notes on the whole who el- who else is the remaining survival survivor of Brendock. Yeah, so I, I I actually agree with you that it was probably her. Um because mm-hmm. again we're because we're we're this whole episode is told from OSHA's perspective on things. So mm-hmm. so 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 of course, yeah, so she was locked in the room and like you said, things escalated with May like you know, trying to kill her. <laughs> and right. and so all you know, so whenever she does escape and, and works her way through the power chamber there and stuff and you know, they get to the bridge and, and of course when, when Soul is taking her out, I mean she's seeing the after effects of what transpired there. So, you know, I speak so I think you know I don't, I don't recall seeing her her remains like in the in the hall there with all the other witches. Um unless I missed it. I have to I haven't watched it. I've only watched episode once, but I'll have to the next time I watch it I'll have to I have to look out for that. But uh that that to me seems to be I know a lot of folks think that the master could be um you know manages Hinkto's character Quarim. Um and I even joked last night, I was like, maybe they'll pull a pull a flash and uh when I was on on A plus, maybe they'll pull a flash on us and uh <laughs> have it be soul. <laughs> and right. as, far, as far as like the whole H, you know, the whole Harrison Wells of it all <laughs> in season one of the Flash. Uh, you know, he because uh, because and I say that just because of how caring and how he seems to be all about OSHA's well-being. But clearly, folks, the jet, those four Jedi know something more that transpired that that night, uh, and, and and so they're they're all not innocent to the point. So, um, so yeah, so those, you know, that was just kind of my just kind of joke theory that you know that I just tossed out there. But I think you're right about Coral. Yeah. I am. So the other thing I wanted to ask about or get your thoughts on is yeah. because in the previous episode, Torben committed suicide. Mm-hmm. Now, did you pick up on anything that happened that makes sense for his actions in present day? The only, other than him being possessed by the witches? I mean, I don't know if there was like some residual... There's that, and then also just sort of what transpired either before, whenever, because during the Ascension Ceremony, I think there was a lot of disruption and stuff, and they heard people yeah, they, they breaking in, quote, I guess, I can't remember the exact term, but I mean, essentially breaking into the, into, the, into the coven. So, you know, either something from that moment when they first in- encountered the witches and of course there's a whole lie that they told as far as you know um i don't see that's too early for yeah. anything to have happened i i yeah. thought you were gonna go with where what i'm thinking that we we see we see may someone start the fire and yeah. then chaos but then we're stuck with osha trying to escape we yeah. don't you don't see and then soul comes out of nowhere and you're just like why are yeah. you the only one here we don't see any of the other three well, it, so yeah, yeah i was then, gonna yeah so i was thinking yeah. that too that was yeah uh, and that was gonna be my next point too is that during that incident something happened there that again we'll get maybe from other people's perspective right yeah yeah i I just, my point is, like, this is why I said before, I think we're going to get a third episode with Carrie Ann Moss, because I think they purposely cut out our change, focus, change perspective to OSHA, and then they're leaving May's perspective on the events for a later episode, so you can do a flashback, because... And this is suddenly dead, clearly not dead from being burned alive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there, there is something that happens that um, neither OSHA or Soul are arguably witness to. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I just, I hope that in the later episodes they make it very clear as to why Torben would commit suicide. Okay, yeah. keyword Torben. 
Okay, so you're not telling me that Anirdra killed Anissa and then Torben commits to it. No, no. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any of that BS. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, yeah, this, this is a fine episode. Yeah. I think what's also going on with me is I know I'm not going to watch this show for another, like, several weeks. Um, so it's hard for me to get invested when I'm just like, I'm about to put this on the shelf for a little bit. So, so that's probably also why I've been lukewarm on it and, um, don't want to get too attached right one. I don't want to get sucked in to the point where I'm like, and pause. <laughs> so, Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Any I, other I, thoughts before we wrap up? No, no, I mean, I think we covered all the major points from the episode. Um, that's the in closing. I think the the true mystery here is what happened in that room and and the murder mystery aspect that that uh, we got initially told um, was sort of like, yeah, that's one thing, but really here the the real story here is what happened in that room that night and 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 then we'll we'll learn who the master is and 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 whether or not we get Sith in this ep- in this series or not is yet to be determined. I mean, we you know we get we we, we get the elements of them, but will they actually use that word Sith? You know that remains to be seen. Yeah, just to hold just to hold up the whole the whole canon that was established with the lines in uh, in the in the prequel trilogy. Yeah, yeah, we shall see. And are you going to continue doing a plus opinions? Yeah. Recap? Yeah, I will be joining them, and um, so the, the carry our flag as far as uh, some of the Star Wars stuff while while we uh, focus our attention here on the boys and House of the Dragon. Yeah, so be sure to be tuning into that if you are um, watching the Acolyte. And on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can follow me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>